Supercharging. One of the oldest methods to increase the power output of an internal combustion engine is by forcing air into the combustion chamber and burning more fuel to that air. This is the preferred method for high horsepower American V8s like the Shelby GT500, SRT Hellcat, and Corvettes. On the other hand, high horsepower European and Japanese vehicles like the BMW M5, C63 AMG, and Toyota Supra exclusively use turbochargers as the means to increase air density and output of an engine. Why is that? The origin of supercharging goes all the way back to 1860 with the Roots Blower Company. Brothers Philander and Francis Roots patented the design for an air pump for use in blast furnaces to melt iron. Superchargers are just a mechanically driven air pump that either compress air in the manifold, which we call root style, or twin screw, which compress air within the rotors. The majority of OEM superchargers you see now are twin screw superchargers due to how much more efficient they are versus root style when it comes to charge air temperatures and parasitic loss of driving the supercharger, which negatively affects fuel economy. When tasked with building high horsepower power plants, Ford, Dodge, and Chevy for the last 15 years have produced mainly supercharged V8 engines. Examples like Ford's 4.6 liter Terminator and the GT500 from 2006 to present day, the Cadillac CT5V and the Camaro Z01 6.2 liter V8s with 1.7 liter superchargers, and the Dodge Demon 6.2 liter Hemi with a 2.7 liter IHI supercharger making 840 horsepower. Attempts to move away from this configuration have been futile, like the 4.2 liter Blackwing Twin Turbo V8, which use a hot V configuration that had virtually no turbo lag and an immense amount of torque, but was ultimately discontinued due to high production costs and poor sales. This leads to the question, there must be an advantage to supercharging, right? Well, yes, in positive displacement superchargers, they aren't limited by the boost threshold like a turbocharger is. The boost threshold is the minimum exhaust pressure you need to spool the turbocharger to make positive manifold pressure a boost. With superchargers, they can make boost right off of idle since they are directly connected to the crankshaft and every rotation of the blower feeds the engine with a certain volume of air. Also, no lag. Lag is different from boost threshold where it's the time delay to when the turbocharger reaches its desired boost pressure once it's above the threshold. Smaller turbochargers have less rotational mass, therefore they can spool quicker, but lag can't be completely eliminated. Now, supercharging isn't purely an American thing. Cars like the E55 AMG with its 5.4 liter V8 compressor was supercharged. In fact, seven other models use the M113K engine. The Audi S4 3.0T had a supercharged V6 that was used throughout Audi's lineup, and even Japanese cars like the first generation MR2 had superchargers. But what? why the transition? Well, in the last 15 years, turbocharger technology has gotten good, really good. <laughs> Well, the introduction of the hot V engine configuration really changed the game for European cars. This is where the turbochargers are inside the engine valley and the intake and exhaust ports are flipped. Exhaust gases that feed the turbocharger travel much shorter distances and retain a lot of heat and energy, also decreasing turbo lag. The added benefit is the compactness of this design and the turbochargers are much easier to service. Where superchargers fall short is the inherent parasitic loss. It takes power to turn the supercharger to give boost, inherently taking away from the overall output. Turbochargers, on the other hand, use the kinetic energy of the exhaust gases to spin the turbine connected to a compressor and then add to the overall engine output, much more efficient. There's two main reasons why high horsepower American cars are typically supercharged versus turbocharged. First is technology comes at a cost. The more expensive it is to manufacture, the higher the end cost of the vehicle and the American cars sit at a sweet spot of capability for the price. Like the Camaro Z01, it's around $70,000 and can wipe plenty of 150 dollars to $200,000 supercars on a racetrack. But if it were $150,000, nobody would buy it because it doesn't have the same prestige as like a Porsche or McLaren. To keep costs low, you use a pushrod V8 instead of dual overhead cam. You use a belt-driven supercharger instead of a hot V turbo. Transmissions also found in the Tahoe versus dual clutch transmissions. Secondly, which I think is the best part, is the sound. Now we can argue all day long which sounds better, but there is an added rush to the experience hearing a supercharger scream and whine. Modern turbos are very quiet and with factory diverter valves make almost no noise. On the other hand, you know when there's a supercharger under the hood or you're low on power steering fluid. 
there's such an historical lineage to supercharged American cars, it wouldn't be wise from a marketing perspective to really just give that up. Now, is there a future in supercharged cars? Realistically, not really. Dodge is planning to discontinue the Hellcat 6.2 in 2024 to usher in a new era of EV muscle cars. The Escalade V will be the last supercharged Cadillac ever. The GT500 and Raptor R will hold out till mid 2024, and even then the future is uncertain. Manufacturers would just rather develop EVs and pour more development into better supercharged cars, plain and simple. This is a situation we will look back at in the next 10 years and realize we were at the peak of internal combustion engines. Me personally, I think that both engine styles have a place in the modern engine space, especially with the supercharged pushrod V8s. They're simplistic, they're easy to maintain, they're easy to fix and build. And es essentially that cost efficiency is gonna be transferred to the product where you have very capable machines that are gonna be much cheaper than their European counterparts. Now the European V8 twin turbo engines with the hot V setups are just as important because they usually push the bounds of technology and they're always innovating newer and newer processes that slowly get trickled down to er other areas. You wouldn't have the Cadillac 4.2 liter Blackwing without the N63 BMW motor, which was the first time the hot V was used in a petrol slash gasoline engine. So they both have their place here. And I think that as the innovations in the European side start to trickle down, they get more cheap and more efficient, maybe they will get to the point where it's cheaper to manufacture a turbo engine than a supercharged engine in high horsepower applications. But until then, we're just gonna be stuck with some whiny little superchargers. <laughs>